Ten-year-old Michael Sanders of Tualatin, Oregon, had taken care of his neighbor's dog, Buster, often enough to know his tricks. So when Michael's neighbors asked him to look after their friendly beagle over the Christmas holidays, his mother, Kathy, never once imagined that her son might be getting in over his head. The Spencers, whenever they go on vacation, they'd always ask Michael to take care of Buster because they knew how much Michael enjoyed him. Michael would go over every day to let Buster out and take him for a walk. And then he'd go back in the evening and make sure he had his food and water and put him back in the laundry room. One day when I went over there, his water and his food was kicked over. Did you make a mess, Buster? And the next day, Buster is tore down the shades on the windows. Buster, look what you did. Every time when I went over there, he was just making a Buster, mess of everything. What have you been doing? What you, why do you have these spells? Come on. And I'd have on. to clean up after Come him on. every day and make sure he's not in any mischief. Thanks, Rick. Huh? Yes. I'm gonna go check on Buster, okay? Okay, you need to hurry, okay? Because we need to get up skiing. Okay. Do we have everything? I walked down the sidewalk and I opened up the gate and I thought I was imagining something. Buster! Buster! Are you okay? Buster's head was just coming through the wall. It's okay. Come on. My first Come thoughts on, were, are you okay, Buster? Does your neck hurt? Can you breathe all right? Come on, Buster, it's okay. Come on. Come on, Buster, it's okay. I tried to push his head back through, and Come his on. ears were acting Come like on, stoppers. Go back. Go back. It was really frustrating. Michael called home and got his older brother, Rick. Hello? Mike, where are you? He called about 10 minutes after he left, and he said for me to come over right away. It was very urgent. <laughs> it's not funny. He's choking. I saw the dog's head looking around, and it just started staring at me. Well, have you tried pushing his head back? Yeah. It looked like somebody had cut his head off and just mounted it on the side of the house. And I was just laughing, going, oh, wow, this is weird. Warm water, Dad. Dad said to try it. Put it around his collar. We called my dad, and he said to get some warm water so we could mat the fur down with it, and then try to push his head through. Pull yourself. Buster, come on, do it. Come on, Buster. Let's go back. Come it didn't on, help or anything. Back. It just got fur everywhere. Come on, Buster, go back. Get back. By then, I thought it was a very serious situation on, because the dog's tongue was turning blue, and he was kind of wheezing and coughing and stuff. The boy's father, Todd, came to see if he could help. When I walked into the utility room, I couldn't imagine how he got himself into that situation. Bush, Rick? I am. Buster's really stuck. Bush. Bush again. Buster was squirming and twisting. And his body was going one direction and his head the other. Let's try it again. Okay. Let's go. Now. I was scared because I didn't know how long Buster was in there and how tight he was stuck in there. I had the responsibility of watching him and I didn't know if he was going to live or not.
Todd called the non-emergency number of the Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue for advice, and some firefighters, including Dennis Pratt, volunteered to come to the house. When we came around the side of the house and approached the dog, his head was sticking out into the backyard, kind of like a hunting trophy. Brian, we're going to try and push the dog back one more time. Firefighter Brian Sherrard was inside with Buster's body. We tried to coordinate our pushes and our pulls so we weren't twisting on the dog, but we were concerned that we'd may damage his airway if we tried to push him through the hole with any more force. Go ahead and loop it up, Dennis, and I'll hold him. We used a lubricant that we keep on the engine, and we smeared his ears with that and tried to back him out through the hole. Start with the right ear first. Okay. It's too tight. I can't get it through. No, he doesn't seem to be coming at all. Maybe you can rotate. As we tried to push the dog back through the hole, his respiratory distress increased, and the dog became quite anxious. His breathing didn't sound too good. He was wheezing and salivating. He was not able to swallow, and we knew that we would have to speed things up if we were going to have any chance of getting the dog out alive. Okay, whenever you're ready. Move your fingers back. Back on his head. When they started to cut around the house, I was thinking that they might slip and then cut Buster. Put your hands closer to the top of his head. That frightened me a lot. Hold his head up. Once we finished the fourth cut with the skill saw, we had this block of wood that was still around the dog's head. Okay. Move your fingers. There you go. Okay. Coming loose. We were able to chip away and break the little square siding in half and just pull it right around from the dog's neck. Hey, got, got it. it. Got it's it. coming. Hey, Brian. Okay, Brian. You got him? He's out of there. Ah, got him. There's Buster. I was very relieved for Michael that Buster was going to come through this okay. All right, Buster. All right. I was amazed that Buster was okay being trapped in there. I was really thankful that the firemen came because if they didn't come, I didn't know what would have happened to Buster. But now that Buster is out, he's happier. So am I. Buster, come here. Come here, Buster. Although they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, Buster's owner, Alicia, is hopeful that her six-year-old beagle will someday learn to stay out of trouble. To hear that he had put his head through a dryer vent, I found it very funny, and it was just par for the course for something that Buster would do. Come here, buddy. Buster. Buster, Buster. don't ignore me. Come on, buddy. The lesson for the Spencers is don't leave Buster alone, because he does not want to be left without them. That was what they decided, that from now on, Buster was going on vacation with them. They weren't going to leave him. Buster is alive today because of Michael. He did exactly what he was supposed to do and called for help when he needed to. I do think that Buster knows that I saved his life because he's always so happy when I'm around him. It feels great to save a dog's life because I just love dogs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>